What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing the top 10 worst zombie maps. I hope this setup is a little bit better. I tried, I know I don't have the perfect setup, I don't have a tripod, so I just tried to elevate the camera because I know the first two videos are kind of wonky. So hopefully this is a little better. I know it's not perfect, I don't have a green screen, I don't have a backdrop, I don't have anything, so this will have to do for now. Anyways, these are the top 10 worst maps in all of Call of Duty Zombies. This includes Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and Sledgehammer. And you can probably already guess some of the maps on this list if I said Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer. So anyways, let's get into it. Coming down into the number 10 spot, this is where the Dislike Bombers are called in. This is, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Kino Der Toten. Yes, I said that out loud, unironically. Keynote or Toten? Now listen, I did not grow up in Black Ops 1, so I really feel like this map is just the ultimate nostalgia goggles map. And this is the other thing, if I say this to someone who hasn't played uh, like Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4, they do not understand why I would say this. And I perfectly get that, right? But just hear me out. Compared to everything else, this map is just the dullest of the dull. It does not do anything, it does not innovate from Doris, and it does not contribute. It is just a snooze fest, and the Thunder Gun that just makes this map so just easy. And that's why Kino is on this list. It's great for beginners, and I'm sure that's why so many people love this map is because it's a beginner map it's easy it's mindless you don't have to think about it you just have to hope you get a good weapon from the box the only way this map is challenging is if you do a high round strategy such as the alleyway or the fire trap strategy other than that if you just train on the stage this map is just an ultimate snooze fest so it is just so easy but it's also such a staple when you think of zombies you think of kino you think of the theater map right if you ask anyone even though they might have not played zombies in 10 years they can tell you about the theater map right that's why kino comes in at number 10. number nine <laughs> my first zombies map so no i'm not a hypocrite for putting this as one of my favorites this is Die Rise. Yes, Die Rise was my first ever Zombies map. I remember it so well. I was such a big fan of the multiplayer in Black Ops 2. And then one of my friends from school said, hey, get on, we're gonna try something else. And then we loaded up into Zombies. I had no idea what it was. We loaded up into Die Rise and he just said, follow me. It was such a cool experience the first time because I had no baseline for what it was and it was such a confusing maze and that's why I loved getting into zombies because the maps are a maze and that's why I love Mob of the Dead because learning that map is such a well-made map and it was so interesting for me to learn. So that's why I love Mob of the Dead so much. Or around Die Rise, it is just annoying, right? Like you have Who's Who, which was on my worst perk list, Who's Who is just such a weird perk. It doesn't work how it's, you think it would, right? And Die Rise, it's just annoying, right? It's just an annoying map, and it's just, why? Die Rise, I think one of the, I think Die Rise, if you remastered it into a Zombies Chronicles 2, it could be such a good map if you just put in a couple of things. Number one, this is PhD Lopper or slider, I don't care at this point. Just put PHD in some sort of way so we can negate fall damage and then we can then we'll be on track. Number two, fix who's who so it either has the fact that you keep your weapon loadout when you spawn in in who's who mode or make it so you're invisible to the zombies like you're in afterlife or you have in plain sight or something. So just something to help who's who be such a good perk. Number three is an elevator pass and you to be able to call the elevator at your own will. Like it is so annoying when you're down in the power room or you just built a splicklifier and then you have to wait five minutes for an elevator to come and pick you up so you can get back to your training spot. Like this is one of the things I want to see come back in zombies is a loop like you're forced to go one direction in a map but I also want to see it done well. Die Rise is a great example of needing to go in a loop like you go up the elevators then you go over to the other the spawn skyscraper and then you go down that one 
and it's such a great example of a loop, but I want it to be made well. When you leave your training area or where you wherever you are, like it's like, oh, I have to go get this perk or I'm gonna go pack a punch. You have to go to pack a punch, even if it's like two feet away from where you are. Then you have to go up the elevator. Then you have to come all the way down back to your back, back to your spot that you're training or camping at. And that's why I think Die Rise is just such an annoying map. It's not that it's insanely bad. It's just it's just annoying, right? It's just tedious and annoying to just do basic features. So that's why Die Rise comes in at number nine. Number eight, Alpha Omega. Oh my God. Alpha Omega could be such a good map if you just did a few things right. And that's why I don't like this worst zombies list. If a lot of these maps are just, you just need minor tweaks or minor changes that I feel like were planned during development, but were cut due to either budget or time. And that's why these maps are so disappointing because they weren't fully fledged out and realized. And this goes with Alpha Omega. First off, it is a comic cartoon drawn cutscene, which I know no one is really a fan of. And I know there's exceptions like the Victus cutscenes and the Derizon Drop cutscene, but I feel like those are more stylistic. It's very clear that in Alpha Omega and Tagger Toten, these maps had major budget cuts. So anyways, Alpha Omega, I feel like a few tweaks I would make to this map is first off, you will never turn on power when you're playing in a public match. Turning on power, I don't know why they did this. If you want to turn on power in Alpha Omega, all players need to be in the generator room. Why? Like, you know how hard it is to get fucking idiots that don't know what they're doing in Alpha Omega to go stand in a room and like hold their position for a few minutes? Yeah, it's cool, but you could have so easily done it like Zetsubo no Shima. In Zetsubo, you just need the one player, or whoever wants to actually turn on power, just needs to be down in the water. It's such an easy option, right? Then we also have the electric crawlers. Fuck these guys, they are so annoying. I feel like I know what they were going for. Like in Shadows of Evil and Revelations, you have the bugs spawning in. Like Jason Blundell described these as popcorn enemies. And that makes sense because the Apothecan bugs are not that, they don't cause that much trouble. They only do a little bit of damage, but if you leave them there for too long, then they can cause some trouble. But they also have low health. In Alpha Omega, I'm pretty sure they were trying to make those popcorn enemies, but they are so annoying. It's like the alien boss in Spaceland if it was just a common enemy type, which I will never understand. They teleport, they don't die in one shot, and they also shoot projectiles. And, they, and the projectiles actually do a lot of damage. So I feel like if the electric crawlers were taken out of Alpha Omega, it actually would be not a bad map. And another major gripe I have is how Pack-a-Punch works and how the contamination gas, or what is it, Nova 6, like that gas leaks, you always get gas leaks like every few rounds. So if you wanna pack a punch, of course the round you wanna pack a punch on is the round a gas leak happens. It's so annoying. It's not as bad as a thing like Exo Zombies where an entire section of the map is filled with gas and you can't go in there, but it's just annoying when you wanna pack a punch and it's like, oh yeah, the thing I already did, I have to do again. The Easter egg isn't too bad. I actually do enjoy the Easter egg. I enjoy Rushmore and I enjoy how get the ray guns but i feel like this map with just those few tweaks this could actually be a pretty good map that's why alpha omega comes in at number eight coming down into the number seven spot this is the worst infinite warfare map east from beyond holy shit what a bad map what a bad map just Beast from Beyond, you can obviously tell how much effort was put into Mephistopheles, but at the detriment of Beast from Beyond. To my Hollow Knight reference, this is the equivalent of the Hollow Knight boss when you're trying to get to the Radiance boss. It is just an obstacle that is unnecessary that you're trying to get to that end game goal, and it's a fairly easy map compared to Mephistopheles, but it's just one of those annoying roadblocks that you have to get past if you want to fight him. East from Beyond is kind of cool because you teleport to the theater and get outside the movie technically, and it's actually really cool how they tied in Extinction, but it's also kind of a middle finger to Extinction fans because they basically decanonize the whole goddamn mode and go. So if you loved Extinction, Beast from Beyond is basically just a giant middle finger to you. 
So <laughs> these from Yon, it's just uninspired, it's small, and it's just kind of whatever. It's it's such a forgettable map. And the only reason you remember about Beast from Beyond is because of the Cryptids, the Venomex, and Mephistopheles, which technically isn't even a part of the map. It shouldn't be. I feel like if you complete any Easter egg in any map, you should have been able to fight him after you got Director's Cut. That's just my opinion, though. So that's why Beast from Beyond is at number seven. Number six, Nuketown. Nuketown Zombies is like Alpha Omega if you were not in control. And that's why I kind of like Nuketown every once in a while, but subsequent playthroughs of Nuketown Zombies is god awful. It is so annoying when you're trying your best to survive on round 15, wondering why Jug hasn't spawned him yet. And of course, it's always like the last one of the last two things you get. Of course, on round five, you get Juggernog, and then you get Double Tap, and then you get Speed Cola, and then you get fucking Juggernog, of course. Like this map, I feel like it's a two-sided, it's a necessary evil for how it was made. If you just had Nuketown Zombies as that map, without the perks being dropped in and you just had all the perks spawned in and all the things it would be such a boring map but also it's at the detriment of that so they want to make it more creative and fun and i understand that so they made it so the perks spawned in randomly so it's kind of like a two-sided coin like you were gonna i was gonna hate it either way like if, you, if the perks and pack punch were spawned in all at the same time wouldn't be a fun map if it was random not a enjoyable map so that's why Nuketown comes in at number six. Number five, Blood of the Dead. Blood of the Dead is such a disappointing map. It takes Mob of the Dead, one of my favorite maps of all time, and just fucks it in the ass, like righteously fucked. It takes Mob of the Dead and just ruins the flow of it. Why is there things to do in the spawn room other than to increase the runtime of the map? Why is there a Blundergat skull in the spawn room. Why is there anything in the spawn room? The spawn room is cool, but it's just such an unnecessary part and it's so tedious when you're trying to get something and you're like, oh yeah, I have to go all the way back to spawn to do X, Y, and Z, right? And the Easter egg, good God, this is probably the worst Easter egg of all time and I've done pretty much all of them, including the Exo Zombies ones. Sorry guys, I ran out of video storage. So anyways, Blood of the Dead, Bad map, terrible flow, terrible easter egg, need I say more. Such a middle finger to Mob of the Dead. So Blood of the Dead, number five. Number four, the king of hated maps, Transit. This is such an annoying map. And I think that's a common theme you will see on this list. It's that they're not bad. There's just so many things that are annoying and there's so many things that are in the way of this map from it being good. Like you can see the potential, you can see the innovation, you can see what they were going for, but just the experience you have yourself on the map is just not fun. It is anti-fun. What kind of Easter egg makes you turn off the power in the map? It's a unique idea, but it's not a good one. The denizens, fuck the denizens. I just love how Treyarch basically admitted that the fog and the denizens and the lava are purely there specifically because the consoles cannot handle how unfinished the map is because the map is so big it has to be unfinished. If you look at transit without the fog you can see just how bare it is, how barren it is and it is it's a unique idea transit is the king of unique interesting ideas poorly executed to the point where it makes me want to kill myself the jet gun what the hell oh my god the jet gun like it's just one of those maps where it's just like why is this here why is this a thing why can i only carry one part at a time i swear to god if you could just carry every part at the same time that map would already be better. So Transit coming in at number four. Now the top three are probably maps you haven't even heard of. Number three is the Darkest Shore. The Darkest Shore is literally just Shangri-La stripped of any fun it has. How did Sledgehammer not learn from Transit that fog in a map is not fun? Sure, it's kind of interesting in this map, because if you're in the fog and you don't shoot your weapon, the zombies can't see you. So sure, that's kind of a cool mechanic, whatever. 
but it's just, it makes the map so, so dull. As dull as World War II already is, it's already such a dull color palette. World War II Zombies, The Darkest Shore, it's just like, here's a wall of gray for you in case you weren't having a bad enough time. The Easter Egg. Woo! <laughs> now, I haven't really played the Easter Egg recently, so maybe it's been patched, but when I played the Easter Egg when the map first came out, good God, what a mess. It is so buggy, it was so messy, it was just fighting the map. You were just fighting the whole time, trying to finally kill these fucking moisture mucleurs or whatever the hell they were called. And the boss fight is just not enjoyable. It's just these fast tanks of health that do high damage and it's just like, why do I even exist? So Darkest Shore comes in at number three. Number two, this isn't even considered a map by most of the community. If you watched Mr. Keylexify and Mr. Raffle Waffle's compilation on this map, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Tortured Path. It is a non-map. It is non-gameplay. It is a non-zombies map. It does nothing. It's just three beta maps compiled together into one long map. Not to mention just the ridiculousness that surrounded this map. You had to complete the Easter egg in a public match? What? Tortured Path is where I really dropped off in World War II Zombies, so I only played those maps that in the Frozen Dawn just like once or twice. So I really don't know how the experience is, but from my experience and just hearing other people's experiences, this map just sounds and feels like a hell fuck. It does not sound like it is good in any capacity whatsoever. And I can fully understand that. Like if with my experience with the Tortured Path, aligns with other people's experiences and then they're like oh but that's not all you have all this other shit i can't even imagine so torture path comes in at number two coming in at number one the worst zombie map of all time we have a four way tie are you ready you probably know what it is if i said four way tie we have infection Outbreak, Descent, and Carrier. Oh my god, Exo Zombies just as a whole is just so unenjoyable. Exo Zombies is just non-zombies. It is not fun. It is anti-fun. And the reason why I put all these maps together is because they're all the same. They're all blocky. They're all just facilities. They're all, they all have the same color palette. They just have like this bland gray, this bland like shade of like brown, gray, white, black, along with just, oh look, it's the advanced warfare colors. Like the, you know that neon blue and neon red from the multiplayer? Like if it wasn't for the sci-fi aspect of advanced warfare, these maps would be just utter shit. They are non-maps. They just do not exist in most people's minds. Just the wonder weapons in any of these maps are not good. None of the weapons are good. The upgrade systems aren't good. It's just unfun. And each map just has non-fun mechanics built into them. Outbreak is just some close quarter to stilliness. Infection is just the sewer because that's where you're gonna be playing the entire game because every time you get out in the open, that area that you're in gets gassed like Hitler. Carrier is just an Atlas facility boat. You barely notice you're on a boat unless you look out of out the map and you just see. Oh well, yeah, I'm on a boat. Descent, in my opinion, is the only one that really changed it up. But again, it's an Atlas facility. It's just an Atlas hotel or an underwater resort or however you want to put it. Descent's environment is the only interesting one just because it's underwater. But again, you barely notice that you're underwater. You, like half the time, you have to like literally look at a window and you see blue, but that could just be a blue wall, right? That could just be a blue wall. And then you start the window, oh, there's a fish. Oh my God, fish AI, dude. Yeah, uh, all of the Exo Zombies maps are just absolutely God awful. They are all the same map. They're all facility maps. They're all blocky, high walled, just, nonsense all right and the easter eggs do not help them 
at all. So that's why all the Exo Zombies maps come in at number one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't subscribe, don't like the video, dislike the video actually. What else am I forgetting? Oh yeah, Twitch. I'm on Twitch. I'm probably streaming. So let me give you guys the rundown. How it works now is that I just started my new job and you know, new as in temporary job until Corona is over. So, so the upload schedule is going to be more concrete and set in stone. I know we've been uploading every day, so that's not really like not concrete, but you know, you know, just now that I know what days I have on and off, it's just something to keep me going just to get a schedule going. So I will probably be live streaming almost every day that I work. And then every day off that I have, I'll be working on videos that no one watches. So, bye.